Well, sorry about that, guys. We unfortunately lost our internet signal. So we are back up and running now. Gremlins are gone. Everything is all good. The sun is coming out and there's wonderful things afoot. Shadow and Cub are still messing around with his hyena and trying to find a way to get their food back, but they're not winning at this stage. Shadow is just on my right-hand side. I have no idea where the Cub's gone. The Cub was around this section, but Shadow's just up on a termite mound. It's a mound that I said I would thought they might go and sit on. There's a bit of shade. And now that the sun's come out, I think she's just looking for somewhere just to rest and sit down and take it very easy so nice to see her and she can see she's still got a bit of difficulty with walking up onto high spots like this on top of a mound she's battling a little bit with the way that she walks but she's obviously doing just fine and the fact that she's killing fully grown male impalas means that even though she has got a slight limp she's more than okay and i'm surprised she's gonna lie where she's gonna lie there's a much better shelf for her off to the right but well if you're a female leopard you choose where you want to be and who am i to know what is more comfortable since I'm not a leopard, but the cub, like I said, oh, there comes the cub now. I can't, didn't know where it was, but I can see it's going to come up towards mom now. It's kind of striding along. There we go. Hello, little one. I just can't believe how much more relaxed this little cub has gotten. It walked past us just now within a meter. Joy, no, I don't think they look hungry at all. I mean, if you look at Shadow up on this mound here, you'll see her belly is round and full and exp kind of as big as it's going to be so I don't think they're in any way hungry it's more a situation that they want their food back because it's much easier to try and get it back than it is to go and hunt another impala so they're just going to sit here and be patient they know that hyena is going to eat itself silly and there might still be some scraps that are left over that it can go after but they most certainly are not hungry and they are full um, they obviously could put a few little bits into the tummy and, and fill themselves up a little bit more but they have had a really good meal both bellies are fairly rounded which means that they've done just fine you can also see their rate of breathing is quite fast which is a good indication that both of them have actually fed quite well so i think it's a situation where they're not that hungry hello beautiful girl she's is just sitting and relaxing now i wonder if the cub no cub has been told you stay down there there was a little growl just now how nice is that to have the two of them up on a mound together and like i said i've just been so impressed with this little one and how it's kind of become over the last few months in terms of how relaxed it is i watched the sighting with noel the other day when she was by herself and she was not running or being shy or secretive in fact the quite the opposite she was posing and she was out and about and i'm sure mom wasn't too far away like noel said so i think that's part of the reason but it also seems as though she's getting far more comfortable with the vehicles which is wonderful news and hopefully it means that she's going to continue to provide us with a lot of sightings and it's amazing how all of a sudden well not all of a sudden over the last i would say three months we've really seen this push into these areas from shadow and tundi and we obviously know that tundi's got the den site that's now closed and we, we can't really check there anymore we will have sightings of tundi a lot though around the area and, and her moving around but we have seen a lot more of shadow recently and it's actually very shadow when she's got a cub that gets to a stage that that this cub is at so anywhere of around sort of eight months and onwards i find shadow actually becomes a lot easier to find she's quite tough to find when she's on her own without cubs or when the cubs are still very small once she's had cubs though she becomes a leopard that we we tend to find a lot easier than when she's without them it's it's a strange thing because normally it's the opposite way around normally leopards are quite secretive when they've got cubs and don't really want you to find them but it's the opposite with her she seems to be a lot more out and open and, and in the sort of clearings and moving around on roads when she's got cubs and that's where I thought she was going to lie initially it seems as though I think I might be right she might decide to lie there instead but it's amazing how she's sort of changed oh that is perfect my girl is that nice it's nice to flop your paws down hmm does that not look very leopard like that's about as leopard like as you could get but yeah like I was saying I mean she's become a lot more sort of um sort of noticeable and it was the same with Sindile when she had Sindile she was seen quite a lot and we used to see her you know walking around in areas and the thing is a lot of people are saying that she's come back into Juma and she's spending a lot more time but actually when Sindile was around she spent a lot of time in this western part of Juma she used to hang around maybe not as deep as what she's going now but she definitely used to spend a lot of time in these areas I remember when I came to Simambili when I first started there and Sindile was around on the Triple M road and, and talking to Brent and Jamie they used to tell me that they used to see Sindile all the time and I, in fact, actually used to see Sindile very often on Triple M itself, and so it seemed as though a good place. Shadow, you look about as 
queen-like as possible up there. It's amazing. She's kind of got her little throne. Now I'm going to move a little bit because Sens is dealing with a stick at the moment that is in his way. So I'm just going to slightly change. Phil, you're wondering how many litters Shadow has had. Well, Phil, the answer to that question is very difficult because Shadow has probably had more litters than most of the other female leopards in this area. Way, 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 way more than uh, we even probably know about because she's lost quite a number of them. So, difficult to say. I mean, I've seen her probably, I've never counted, but it's easily must be seven or eight litters that I've seen her have. And, and so I would imagine she must have had probably over 10, 12, I don't know, somewhere around there. Um, in terms of successful litters, well, Sindile is, is the only surviving cub that she's ever had. Um, we don't know where he is anymore. We don't know where he's gone. He's a typical male and has distributed out and moved away from these areas and, and we haven't seen him. But um, yeah, I mean, number of cubs or litters that she's had, difficult to say. She's lost a number of litters before we've even seen them. Amount of times I've seen her pregnant, like I say, eight, nine times maybe, even more at times than that I, it's, it's difficult i can't even remember the amount of times i've seen her pregnant it's a high number though much higher than any of the others if you think of you know leopards like karula salesh they never had anywhere near that amount of of cubs but it's the way it goes unfortunately she's been in an area where it's just been tough for her to be able to sort of raise cubs with with the number of you know male leopards that we've had and hyenas and, and various other things right now taylor mccurdy who was tardy this afternoon and, and we were talking about her tardiness and, and what she's been up to but it seems as though i believe she's tardy because she's been making roast potatoes for everybody on a sunday and i'm sure she wants to tell you all about her roast potatoes and how they've turned out and whether they are going to be very delicious for this sunday roast <laughs> I'm tardy because I've been making roast potatoes. Tristan, let me tell you a little something. I make the greatest roast potatoes in the whole world. Gotta sprinkle a bit of salt, put a brown black pepper, maybe even a couple of sprigs of rosemary, hey? Doesn't that sound delicious? Jar's now salivating. He's drowning in his saliva at the thought of my roast potatoes. Anyways, now we are approaching little governors. We were going to go left, we were going to hug the Mara River, go to the little eastern corner. We're not anymore because I've spotted many cars all in this area and up against this one tree line behind us, which you're not going to be able to see. It's all the way behind the car, even further than, <clears throat> further to the north and to where the sun is setting. So, <clears throat> please excuse me. So we're going to, we're going to head there. And I'm hoping that we're going to find either lions or maybe a leopard. Jar says he doesn't care what it is as long as it's hungry. Somebody's in a killing mood. <laughs> Not joking. Hi, everyone. And um, so, yeah, so we're going to head in that direction. It's a bit far away. Oh, look, it's my favorite scene in the whole wide world. It's the baboons. And I've been saying to you for so long, I want to get the baboons with the pots and pans. <laughs> Today might be the day. Look. It's so great. I just wish the baboon was sitting a little bit closer. There he is. Hello. Go over and play with the pots and pans, Mr. Baboon. I think they've been chased many times and they know better than to go anywhere near the washing line and anywhere near the pot rack. Otherwise, it, I'm sure he's going to have things thrown at him or he's going to be run at by staff members because I feel like that's what baboons experience all the time and vervet monkeys because they're so naughty they just cannot help themselves they're too clever for their own good and they know that if they come around where the humans are they are bound to find food so i suppose it just shows how intelligent they are doesn't it but anyways keeping a safe distance and but still hanging around waiting for an opportunity but let's not wait here for too long let's go to where all the vehicles are and i think I think it's going to be lions. Do you remember the evening we had the really cool sighting of the two lionesses walking right past the car on the edge of a lugger and then they joined up with the young cubs? I think it's that pride. I don't actually know if it's maybe going to be the Ngamas, aka the Ololos, or, or if it's the, the females that live closer towards the Ololo gate. Who knows? I'm actually hoping it would be a leopard. That would be very nice. A leopard with a cub. I miss seeing little leopard cubs. I think we're going to take this one. Yes. 
we're going to take this one. And it seems as though Noelle has got the same idea today. She's also searching for the big cats. Will she be able to find the Inkahumas? Welcome, oh, welcome back and hello. So the Inkahumas and I are in an argument at the moment. <laughs> the one road that I didn't do this afternoon because I didn't want to go past are too close to Tandi's den site. That's where the Inkahumas popped up. They're not close to Tandi's at, at the moment, so, so don't worry about that. It was just the route that we wanted to take. So they popped up there, so we're, we're, we're having differences of opinion at the moment, but I have another surprise for you. It does involve a big cat, um, or big cats, I should say, which might give it away. Um, but I just need you to hold on for about 30 seconds, maybe a minute, and um, we will see if we can get a good visual on them. Because I'm excited because I believe it's my first time. I'm trying to remember what, um, what Tristan and I were discussing the other day about the pride that we used to see. Yeah, there's a vehicle on that side and then also on the other side there, Jean-Dre. Jean-Dre helps me out so much because he sits up higher than I do. He also just has good bush eyes. Helps point out when I have to find things. So we're gonna play I Spy With My Little Eye. <laughs> Something that has whiskers and a tail. Do we have any guesses? Shall we play I Spy? Whiskers and a tail. Boo, you are correct. It is lions. Any guess which lions? I feel like calling lions Leonis today. Leonis, Leonis. We're going to have a vehicle go past us in a minute. Sorry, sorry. All right. Any ideas which lions? Any guesses? I'm going to keep moving to reposition. No guesses. Guys, come on. So it's not in Kahumas because they're being mean to me and don't want to be found. Wendy, you're correct. It's the Sticks Pride. Yay. All right. Let's get a better view. So we have quite a few other game drive vehicles obviously in the area because for anyone that's been traversing on this side it's a little bit harder to find lions when they move out of our boundaries. So it's a bit busy. So I'm just going to do the best that I can to position us with the best view that I can find. Oh, there's tiny little babies. Oh my goodness, Jandre, I'm in love. I'm obsessed. And I think I see a male, Jandre. Let me just come up. I have a feeling that there's some males here and I have a feeling it's the cheeky males that were also eluding Jandre and I the other day. I can just see a bit of the mane. Give me two shakes of a lamb's tail and I'll position. Haha. <laughs> oh, oka mudar. They're so tiny. I'm so excited right now. There's, there's small cubs, but then there's really small cubs. <laughs> Chandra, can we go in on the little one that's in that little erosion patch? I mean, everyone, come on, look at that face. Oka mudar. I mean, it's so cute. I'm just gonna turn my body a wee bit. Look at his little yawn. I'm sorry, I am such a girl when it comes to tiny little lion cubs or tiny little leopard cubs. I am the biggest girl ever and all I do is make googly voices. And I'm sorry, I'm so, but it's, it's too cute. So we have two adult females that I can see and what looks like one, two, three, four, I would say six to eight month olds to about 
10 months old and then those little cubs I would put it about three months three months old that's my general guess for everything um, it's a little bit tricky and we've got that big beautiful male as well saying Chandre one of them there's another vehicle that's to our right hand side that I believe has the second male from what I could hear from the guys earlier I don't know how if you all are excited but I am ridiculously excited right now this is very special very 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 special oh yeah I'm lazy Chandra, I have a feeling that these sort of six to eight month old ones are gonna probably be our most action-packed at the moment. My Michael, so exciting. Um, I'm so happy to hear that this is your first time seeing the teeny tiny Bubba's as well. Thanks, Chandra. You read my mind. I've counted three. Um, Mum's in the way a little. <laughs> Mum's in the way a little bit. But thus far, I've counted three. It's very interesting with with prides when they have different litters. Sorry, I'm also going to make a correction. It's three different adult females, one adult male, and there's three different litters here. Two of the litters I'm going to guesstimate are about two to four months apart, and then the little, little litter, the third litter, uh, is definitely about, about three months. I wouldn't really put them more. It's really interesting when you get females, when you get sisters and or aunties or mums that are very closely connected they'll tend to bring in their little ones earlier than normal if you have any infighting happening with the adult females in the group they'll tend to bring the little ones later and sometimes even separate so part of the reason has to do with when you have older cubs like this with the younger cubs the older cubs are not always nice to the younger cubs and it, it can be quite threatening um, and also sometimes the aunties um, or um, any of the other adult females in the pride are not also always very nice to the youngsters but from what I can see look I mean we've only been here for five minutes but what I can see thus far is because these little little ones are with the older cubs and all the mums that they have quite a tight unit um, and then it works it works well for them and that's why they're able to come out I've seen other prides where females have completely left and then raised their own cubs and sometimes have left until uh, the cubs are more juvenile slash sub adult age uh, just over a year um, before they introduce and, and it's interesting how the different personalities work out like that. I'm sorry, how adorable. I can hear Jandre giggling a little bit behind me. Too cute way too cute at least without having seen any mating just by the fact that the mum of the cubs is relaxed with this male I'm gonna say yes sometimes just sometimes when um, female territories overlap different male territories or if there's nomadic males that come in they'll sometimes mate with those males but then also present to the males that are dominant who might not have been around for the estrus that it's their cubs etc etc but it's a touch it's a little touch and go i've seen it happen a couple of times from what i can tell that this this male is definitely the father everyone's too relaxed with with everybody else there, she's not in any way looking at him or guarding or doing anything ooh taylor has lion but also with elephant together in the sighting so while we're not going to go anywhere with our uber cuteness so while we're sitting here let's go head up that way and see what she wants to show us this lion is gonna get charged no i'm just joking it's all very calm and cool and collected as you can see uh, mr mufasa was having a sleep while this elephant just grazes on the bank of this drainage line so yeah all very nice 
very relaxed for the moment. I think there's lines scattered all over this drainage line. We've, we've already seen another big male. I, I assume that they are the triangle boys, well, at least two of them. And then I see the vehicles are stopping up ahead of me again, so there must be more lions. How exciting. I really am ha glad that the elephants are here because they can wake them up. Because I don't like to watch the cats sleep for too long. But I think this could be very exciting. And we've got many different sightings to rotate to as well. So it will keep me occupied, which is quite nice. But I don't think this lion is even acknowledged. Okay, there he is. Now I can see him twisting his head just slightly and turning his ears towards the elephant. So he's obviously just keeping an eye open. Literally just an eye though. Not both of them. And just watching. But he hasn't really got anything to fear at the spot that he's at at the moment. He's up high on top of a bank. That elephant is down low in a lugger. And even though it doesn't look like it, there must be about a meter in height difference between where the lion is laying and the elephant is feeding. But that's quite cool, isn't it? But there's more. There's many, 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 many elephants around. So I'm, I'm interested to see how this all unfolds. And what we might do just now, though, is once this elephant has walked past, because I'm quite keen to see if it comes closer. I don't know if the elephant knows that the lion's here just yet. He hasn't really shown any signs. But I would like to go and have a look and see what the other cars are having a little peek at. What a beautiful afternoon. Such a variety of things to look at. This is how safari should be, if only the animals sort of played ball all the time. Sometimes they need a break. Oh. There's another elephant crashing through the trees up on the bank, and I suspect it's going to walk exactly the same path as this fella down below. And it looks like some youngsters too, so maybe they'll make it <clears throat> a bit of a noise. They might trumpet. They normally trumpet when they get a bit nervous. This is very cool. This is lovely. Ghost, are you still there? Are you just enjoying this as much as I am? Look at it. Can you, can you see? Actually, just if you go up a little bit. There we go. In the top left-hand corner, if you watch there, there's bushes moving. It's like Jurassic Park. What are you doing? You must be playing with another little elephant. Can you hear the bushes as they crash about? Mita, I haven't heard from you in ages. It's great to hear your voice game. Mita's my little friend. Mita's only eight years old. That elephant is so funny. You're wondering if the lions like to always sleep on the road. They tend to. They lay wherever they want to lay. And uh, it just depends. Sometimes if it's too windy, they'll look for things like trees and shrubs and logs to try and stop the wind. Or they'll sit behind a termite mound. But uh, otherwise, just wherever they flop down, really, like, a, like your dog at home or a cat. I'm hoping that little elephant that's crashing through those trees comes down this way because that looks like a funny fella. I think he's going to stir trouble with these lions. It looks like he's in one of those moods. There's a whole breeding herd coming through there. And there's a breeding herd on our right, which we can have a look at a little bit later. They're just out in the open at the moment. And they're grazing basically towards uh, the lugger. So, it seems as though we're going to have elephants coming from both ways. Ooh. I don't know, but look how close that elephant is getting now. Soon he's going to be so close we're not going to see him anymore. There's a gentle breeze. It's not actually too windy, which is nice. I'm quite happy about that because I'm, I don't think many of the animals are fond of the gustly wind that comes through here. Now, Snazzy, you're wondering if the lion knows that he's so close to the elephants. I did see him twitch his head slightly and his ear went from doing that to this. So I think he knows elephants. He can hear him. I'm pretty sure he went from closed eyes to one eye open and went, eh, and closed it again, went back to sleep. He's not bothered at all. If he was bothered, he would either sit up, he would change his position, his tail would start to move around, he'd maybe flatten his ears. <laughs> All these different types of things. Chris said that was a great lion impersonation. Just to be specific, that was a male lion sleeping. I could have done hands. I could have done a little bit more. I wouldn't give myself A for effort there, Chris. But thank you very much for the pat on the back. But it wasn't deserving. Okay, let's go up because I can't see the elephant anymore. And I, the lion, well, he's sleeping. Let's quickly look at what's going on up here. 
let's see. Who are we going to have next? We're going to have another triangle boy. Are we going to have some members of the pride? Whichever pride this would be. Yes, little baby lions. That's what we got. Little baby lions. Also known as cubs. <laughs> I suppose I should call them what they are and not be set too silly. But there they sit. Now this is where it gets interesting. Where are the adults? Because if they're on their own, those little cubs, they're all safe though, they're up on the, on the lugger. So they've got a good spot. So don't worry, don't worry. These elephants probably won't squash the cubs because they'd be able to get away. They're not going to be silly enough to stay underneath an elephant's foot. So I reckon if those elephants that are out in the open come charging towards the lugger because they pick up on these little lines, they might just run down the bank and off to the other side. Very cool. Well, we're going to hang around here and see how this all develops. My dear friend, Mr. Rose Potato, is sitting with a beautiful leopard and her cub. Let's go see what they're up to. Well, I am sitting with a beautiful leopard and a cub, Taylor Mac. And they can see that they're both sleepy now. I didn't think Shadow would stay the way she was for long. She was battling to try and find her sort of position for her head the when she was sitting with her paws dangling like that and so she's repositioned and lay exactly where I first thought she might lay is because that looks as though it's the comfiest spot of all on top of these termite mounds it's kind of got a nice little shelf little cub has found herself a comfy spot and it's all just rest now so we had a bit of activity earlier and then I think it's going to be a situation where everything is going to start kind of getting more excitable around sunset when maybe more hyenas arrive or you never know maybe these two decide they've given up and they'll then carry on and move off but what an exciting day we've had so far and cat trifecta once again which is always wonderful to have little sticks cubs it's been i think it's the first time those little sticks cubs have ever been on juma so i'm sure noel is buzzing at the thought of that which is quite wonderful and so I haven't even seen those little sticks cubs and on top of all of that there is an Inkuma female with cubs somewhere on Juma at the moment as well because Rex picked up those tracks and we haven't as yet found them so I might do a little turnaround there a bit later if we've got no sort of action happening here a little bit later I might just head up towards Buffalsook Dam and just to have a little check you never know maybe one of the females with the Inkuma pride pops out with cubs too and that will just make a ridiculous amount of cats for our afternoon both in the Mara and the Juma. Now the hyena is not feeding at all it's still sleeping and taking it very easy now while I wait for our little leopards to move in fact that one's just crept up behind me are you sneaking up behind me it seems as though young characters are all full of play this afternoon so not only Shadow's Cub but the Little Sticks Pride Cubs too so let's jump across to Noel and see what the little ones are up to All right, so we've moved around to a different position, and so there's four cubs in total. There's three playing with each other on this log, and then that's that uh, fourth cub that's physically with them there is not part of the same litter. By the fourth cub, I mean that little guy, or it could be a little girl I haven't been able to see, that's just sort of on its ace. I would assume that that's the runt. And it's very curious that that one is not with the other three. And as of course, as I say, that starts moving over. But notice all the bite marks on its back. Oh, hello, Mum. Yeah, definitely the runt. Let's see how the others react to her. Oh, she's going to nurse. How special. So it's possible a lot of those scars come from um, when this little one's trying to nurse. That um, that the others sort of bite and push her out of the way. Oh, shame. Mom's like, it's not time. They've got sharp little teeth, little lion cubs. So it's not easy for the mums when they nurse. It's actually quite painful. And it is definitely a little girl. You can look under the tail. The one that's lying on its belly, that's a little boy. You can just see the testicle starting to drop there. Sorry, just 
want to get my binoculars very quickly. You can also see the size of the paws of the one on its back. Very, the feet are very large um, in comparison to its legs. It's another way to tell it's a male, but those those testes are the best way. And then the one that's on top of him, I have a feeling it's also a male. I just caught a quick glimpse. I'm just busy looking with my binos. Just do triple check. Does look like a male. So we've got two males and at least one female, and then we just need the fourth one to stand up and then we can age that. So that type of information is important to note. Um, any of the ecologists that are on the property um, keep track of that. Yeah. So Taylor is up in the Mara and also has some babies that are playing around like our little lion cubs. So we're going to send you back up there so you can have a view. And we will sit tight here and see you just now. Animals in the whole wide world and they were being so precious a little while ago. I'm hoping they're going to carry on playing. But the three elephants that you can see now, the little ones, there we go, those three were pushing and shoving one another down hills. I heard this strange trumpeting noise and they'd both jumped on the little one and it was desperately trying to get up again. And it's, it's just so precious. It was absolutely adorable. And there's nothing cuter when young animals play it. Actually, it doesn't matter what species of animal it is. It's always so incredible. And then there's a tiny, tiny, tiny little elephant that is not even interested in playing with the others just yet. It is only wanting to follow mom around and it's been trying to suckle but mom won't stand still. So you'll see every time mom stops it runs up to her underneath her arm and well underneath her arm underneath her leg and tries to have a little suckle. But it's not quite quick enough just yet it's still still trying to work out how to suckle efficiently but it is precious. Mom's just on the move she's hungry she's not interested in anything else. But there we go. Come on, there's your opportunity. You see, it takes too long. <laughs> now, Richard, you're wondering if elephants give birth standing up. They most certainly do. Uh, quite a few of the animals, they sort of do the, what's this little elephant is doing right now? <laughs> but it's not giving birth, but it's, it's about a similar sort of action. It's demonstrating very well for us this afternoon. Thank you, little elephant. Uh, so they do. So often when animals hit the ground, uh, I mean, a little elephant actually doesn't have to fall far. I feel sorry for a giraffe. I mean, that's a, that's a long way up and a far way to fall. And, and it often just encourages the animal to take their first breath. I suppose it kickstarts the lungs, doesn't it? But it is very, very tiny. But you saw what I mean, though. And it's not quite quick enough. It, Working out that you must go straight to mom's breast when she want when you want to suckle because she's gonna just keep going. She's not gonna stop. She's obviously got her mind made up as to where she wants to go, and she's gonna be there by a certain time. Well, I'm just waiting for some of these vehicles to move out so we can have some fun with these lions. It's just getting a little bit busy at the moment, but everyone's gonna have to head off soon. So then we'll have this whole sighting to ourselves. But we'll let all the guests. Uh, experience it and have some fun. They have traveled a very, very far way to be here, although so have I, but I'm lucky. I kind of live here, don't I? Well, at least for the next until February, which is pretty cool to spend so much time in Mara. And we haven't had any rain, and it doesn't look like there's any rain on its way just yet either. So I suppose that's a highlight for today. It's been very nice, although this morning it was spitting at one point. Uh, but then, luckily, the wind came on in and blew the clouds away. Very cool. What else is going on? There were some crown cranes hanging around too, but they seem to have moved off. But now our herd of elephants is also moving in the opposite direction that we wanted them to move if we wanted them to chase the lions. They are now going east, where the sun rises. The lions are back that way. Right. 
I think it's time to reposition and go and see what those lions are doing. Scott is copying us this afternoon. He can't be original. He's also found some elephants. And we are spending some time with him in the hope that he decides to walk along the horizon where we will be able to get some incredible silhouetted shots of him. There's a very moody sky, as you can see in the background. And he is a fine, fine specimen indeed. As you would have gathered, we left the Musketeer Coalition. They had not left the carcass by the time we left them. But we thought it would make sense to come and look for a female cheetah that we had a visual of this morning. Not too far from where we are now, but we couldn't pass this opportunity up. As it really is a beautiful, beautiful scene. Hello, Dark Star. You would like to know if elephants' tusks serve a purpose. And yes, they certainly do. Both male and female tusks will, uh, elephants will use their tusks. Oh, it looks like he is going to kind of possibly semi silhouette himself. Not perfectly, but just about. How beautiful is this? <laughs> and what a wonderful, wonderful scene. So, yes, they will use their tusks mainly as tools for feeding, snapping off branches of trees, prying bark off trees, and from time to time males will use them when they are fighting with one another. And I guess if they get a hold of us as humans, they sometimes also use them on us. So they use them as weapons, but usually they don't get into many fights with any other species. The main fights will be between bull elephants over females, and the size of the tusks, how much of an impact that has on any bull's dominance, I'm not too sure. Some tusks that are too big, let me try and reposition one more time. Some tusks that are too big may actually be becoming a bit of a burden to carry around. I'm hoping to try and still get some <clears throat> more low angles on him. There is a chance we could get him silhouetted. Did a fairly substantial loop ahead to give ourselves uh, enough time. No, we're not going to be able to get low enough, but we'll still get some beautiful views of him walking towards us with a wonderful backdrop wonderful now seeing as though we can't get the exact shot we were hoping for I think we may head on in the hope that we find this female cheetah that we were with this morning. Oh, we need to rush you off to some cute cub cuteness. <laughs> cute cub cuteness. And they are cute indeed. Oh my goodness. They're providing us with ample amount of laughter and giggles. So, from what I can tell, it's looking like three male cubs and two females, um, which is very interesting. So, the male that was in the background that we showed earlier, Jandre and I were chatting now, Jandre is pretty convinced it's one of the Birmingham boys, which would make sense. And as far as I know, they're a coalition of three. So now this group of uh, youngsters, of the four, three are boys, and will most likely form a coalition themselves. But what is also an interesting thought to think about is we've got these young, young cubs, and then we've got the two sets of older cubs, also different ages. So it's entirely possible that 
the males, the majority males out of all of them will form some sort of super coalition. And the Sabi Sands is known for having very large coalitions of males that traverse. We talked about the Mapojos the other day, that uh, coalition of about six or seven males that sort of rampage through the area. And Andre is giggling behind me. And yes, it's, <laughs> it's super, super, super cute. So other than the cuteness factor, the if ever, if all of these males survive, and I have yet to see the older ones move enough for me to be able to to ascertain how many males and how many females, the concept that we could have a future super coalition of males within this area is absolutely fantastic in my my head. Chandra, do you see the one that has a bit of bark there? So one of them has a bit of bark. Oh, it's just dropped, and we was carrying it around. Sibling tried to come and take it away. I'm just going to be quiet for a minute and just let you all enjoy, <laughs> enjoy this. There's thorns on on these sticks that are here. These sticks that are here on the edge of the dam are brush pack <laughs> are brush packing the um, the the side of the dam wall so that no one drives up and down them, and also to help rehabilitate. There's there's quite a bit of erosion that's going on, and a lot of the uh, sticks that are being used are from knob thorns. And so there's some serious thorns on there. So you got a little bit attacked and then decided to chew on it and then you saw it just there, it got stuck in his little lip. Or her little lip rather, that's the little little runt one. Michael, your question is, are baby lions born with teeth? Michael, as far as I know, they're not born with teeth, but they develop short, shortly after birth. As far as I know, it's hyena cubs that are born with teeth. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm correct on that one. Sorry, I'm racking my file 13 in my brain at the moment. It's a good question. I love the questions you all ask because a lot of them are, it's not something that I have been able or hasn't been asked with my guests in a really long time so it forces me to go back through my files and and relearn a lot of the information that I used to know before it's keeping me on my toes I like it you must keep it up I didn't do it. You're asking why do these cubs have a black line down their back? Um, that little tuft of hair that goes down the back, the, the adults will also keep. Um, and it won't be as dark as they get older, but we were chatting a bit about it yesterday afternoon when we were with the Incohumas, um, about the fact that um, when they're hunting, especially when the females, and with the males as well, because the males hunt just as much as the females, when they're staggering themselves, especially in grasslands, it allows them to be able to see um, each other. It's sort of a dark line. But th that being said, it's not the only reason. It also has to do with breaking up the, the body shape and the coloration and allowing for a bit of camouflage in there. Even though it was warmer this afternoon, we're getting closer to, to sunset. So we're starting to get some cicadas and crickets going. S sandpiper flying above us just now. Earlier in the drive, uh, Jandre spotted another woodlands kingfisher. 
um, that was calling, but unfortunately it flew off before we could get it on the live camera for everybody. What is also interesting is that these cubs are playing, but they're not making any noises. Usually you hear and they grunt a bit, but they're being quite silent, which is interesting. Oh, shame that one's attacking its older cousin. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> it's not really working. So now the little bit of grooming, that's the... I it wanted to be like, play with me, play with me. Then the older cousin didn't do anything, so now it's going, I love you, I love you. I told you you're asking, do these cubs look a little too skinny to me? The answer is definitely, definitely not. Um, I have a friend that has a son who is extremely active, so he's always been quite thin. Uh, he lost his baby fat very, very early because he's constantly moving, constantly moving. He also prefers to eat a lot of protein, he doesn't eat uh, a lot of anything else, and so he uh, doesn't have fat on him. So with something like a cub, it's going to be the same thing as a, a young child that has that, where they get these fat little bellies when they eat, but the, you, when you can see, everyone else is sleeping and they're very active, so they're constantly burning off. So they've got a little bit of a milk belly on them at the moment, you can see there. Um, and then because they're learning how to use their limbs and their metabolism is going to be quite quick because they're little, they're perfectly happy, perfectly happy, yes, for one, but also very, very healthy. If they were too fat, so fatter than this, um, they wouldn't be able to function as properly and also would throw off their body chemistry. They're, they're good. They're very good. Sorry, Curse, can you just repeat Will's question for me, please? Ooh. A dash hunt uh, curse is a sausage dog, yeah? Okay. So, Will, you're asking how big are these cubs, dash hunt size, sausage dog size, or um, house cat size? Thank you for asking that question. Something I'm still getting used to is you guys not being here. I know you can see it, but then obviously the size. So, for me, I would say closer to sausage dog, dash hunt than a house cat. Um, I, I would also put them in the range of sort of a s eight week old Labrador puppy size if that also helps anybody. <laughs> Got a Birchall's Kukul in the background. I'm obsessed with this sighting everybody. And Jandre is giggling behind me. He's also a bit obsessed with the sighting, I think. Miss Parker, you're asking, will the cubs go back to a den site or will they stay with a pride now? Chandra, that one little female is busy nursing on the mum. I think we might be able to get a good shot if we move to the right there. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Um, look, once with lions, once they take them out of the den and bring them to the pride, that's it. Um, then, then they're out. Dens are used usually for no longer than three months, sometimes a lot shorter. The shortest I've ever seen me personally, and every guy can have a different experience here, shortest I've seen is, is um, two months with a den. Um, so a den site is only used for giving birth, and they'll switch. They, they usually switch uh, one to two, sometimes up to three times, depending on how, many, um, how much interaction they have from other predators or uh, the sort of smells and everything that's going on or, or anything that could possibly have, have interfered in any way. Um, and also just to sort of mix it up and move it closer. They'll usually give birth in their den site either where they were birthed or sort of in their core territory and if the rest of their pride has moved to 
at the outside peripheries of a territory or into the home range, then the mum will start to move den sites closer to that side. Um, so a, a den is used for a very short amount of time because these, especially with lions, they're social animals and they need each other to, to hunt and to survive. Good question. So you'll notice now, I mean, we've been here for about half an hour, I would say, roughly. Um, and they've played quite a bit. That one female did try to nurse, but mum wasn't ready. Now it's feeding time. Now they're all going to go in and nurse. And they'll nurse for quite a while, uh, five to about 20 minutes, depending. Um, and then they'll have fat little bellies and they might take a little nap. Or sometimes what you'll see, because as they're finished with the nursing, then the pride's going to start to get moving. None of them look overly full. I don't think that they've had a, a kill super recently. Um, and then the mum's just giving sustenance for, for the trek for tonight. Another reason is that her teats start to hang low when they get too full, so it's very uncomfortable for her to walk around with teats like that, which is why the mums, when, when the cubs are in the den site, the mums um, try not to leave them for more than about four days or so, because it, it gets uncomfortable for her. Another thing I want to point out regarding the question we had about the... Um, about the den site is with these little little cubs and actually with with all of the the cubs that are in this pride now none of them are really old enough to help with the hunting so what will happen is when this male and these three females start to go hunting if they come across say let's say a wildebeest just for argument's sake the little ones will will be told to stay put where they are and they'll duck down and then the adults will do the the hunting once they make the kill the little ones will join that male lion is out for the count. I think he's opened his eye once and sat up once. Sue, you're asking why do the cubs have spots on their legs? So what you can see um, with the older cubs and then also these younger cubs that are coming through they're born spotted i've even ha come across uh, lion cubs that have an almost rosette background to them the females will keep those spots especially on their legs you can actually see a little bit on the mum's leg just at the top of the screen there throughout their lives the males will lose them totally and it's all for camouflage it's all for blending in Something that I wanted to address, we were asked earlier um, with uh, who's the dad of of this pry of, of these youngsters and is it this male? Because this is one of the Birmingham boys. Um, he's in a coalition with two other males. So all of the males will mate with the females at one point. Usually when one female is an estrus, when she's ready to mate, there will be one male that services her out of the three but the three of them take care of the cubs as if they're their own and protect as if they're their own. So this one could possibly be physically the genetic dad, but it could be the other two as well. Um, the, there's, there's not really that much, much difference amongst it. All right, we are going to head off. Didn't quite hear what Chris said where we're going, so let's keep it a surprise for everybody. Who knows? Maybe we're going to Tristan, maybe we're going to Taylor, maybe we're going to Scott. You never know. Let's see what happens. Well, our two have just woken up. They were sleeping ever so gently on top of the termite mound, and all of a sudden Shadow got up, she hissed at me, and then she decided to walk off. I, she seems to be quite grumpy with the cub. The cub follow, is following her everywhere, and I think she's had enough of 
the cub and the hyenas and the nonsense of her kill being stolen so she's a little on the grumpy side at the moment but that's okay she's expected to be a bit grumpy i would also be grumpy if hyenas came and stole my kill as well now she's going again back to the exact same place this is originally where the kill was somewhere in this general area and you see how she's sniffing around and having a little look for some sort of sign of food so she's looking and here comes cub as well so cub's also coming past us and there it's like a procession one mom walks and then cub follows shortly after let me get myself out of the way sorry sense there we go cub goes and you see how the cub just keeps sniffing exactly where mom is i think this cub's hoping that mom managed to save something of this carcass and that she can follow mom to some more food although i think shadow is far as kind of realizing that most of her kill is gone we heard the hyena crunching some bones just now and having a little feed but it didn't last very long i think that hyena is so full itself when it was dragging the carcass away it was like a round beach ball that had shoved a whole bunch of meat into its mouth and it was looking really quite large and so i think that hyena is just going to literally lie on it and i'm sure it's crunching will attract other hyenas there's lots of vultures sitting here now so i would imagine we're going to get a situation where they will attract more what have you got there? It looks like a stomach lining maybe that she covered up. Oh, there's all the internal organs. You see how I covered those were? So she'd dragged stuff all over it. Look at that. That's amazing. So she managed to cover up all the innards. You see there she's pulled out what looks like the stomach. And so she might eat the lining of all of that and be able to get some nutrients from that. Whether the cub will get a look in, I don't think so. She generally tends to be quite nasty to the cub. Let's see if she's going to growl. See the cub is just sneaking in. You see the little face coming in? No, everything's okay. No, there we go. You hear that? Sorry, little one no food for you right now mom is hungry shame she just got told off you're not coming anywhere near my little meat and the thing is is that i don't think shadow will finish all of that stomach lining so maybe the cub will be able to get a chance to get in there now susie i know you asked about whether or not if shadow lost the kill would i think it was would the cub go and regain it again i think that's what the question was i might be, have heard it wrong Ah, there we go. So, sorry, I heard it's a bit wrong. Uh, Susie, um, you say as Shadow doesn't hoist her kills, would the cub ever hoist? Well, I think so. I mean, the, Shadow has hoisted one or two kills that we've seen. We've also seen a situation where the cub has that sort of notion of going up into the tree. Remember the last time, the last two times we've seen Shadow on a kill, both times the carcass has actually eventually ended up in the tree and the little cub has been there. So, I know Shadow doesn't hoist as much as, as what we would hope, but she definitely does. And look at how this cub is trying to sneak its way in. Little one, you're going to get a smack from mom now, now. Yes, be careful. You can't go in there. See, she's trying her very best. Look at that. <laughs> no, it's not going to work. Mom is going to smack you on the head now, now. And you'll find that leopards are like this. They very seldom will share. They're not like lions in that lions will kind of feed on a carcass together and both will be there. Leopards will be a little bit more sort of defensive and will only eat one at a time and this poor cub is trying its best it's even sometimes making little chuffing sounds which is the sound that mom normally makes when it's looking to call it and it's trying to kind of get its way in and be as submissive as possible you see how it's gone low to the ground just trying to make sure that mom kind of leaves it alone and, and actually feels sorry for it more than anything else but sorry little one i don't think you're going to get any of that i'm afraid who knows maybe maybe she'll get lucky and, and shadow will leave it the nice thing is there's a little bit of afternoon sun that's broken out and it really is looking absolutely beautiful as it kind of just goes onto these leopards Shh. come on little one it's amazing to watch I, honestly i've never seen a female leopard as aggressive as shadow has been over the last few weeks with the cub and food and until this, you know normally when it's that time when they chase their cubs away they get to be a little bit kind of nasty but shadow is always growling at this little one and sort of making it feel as though it's not welcome but there we go i think it might have gotten it aside for itself let's see are we going to see a situation where both of them feed off the same thing i don't think so i think 
You see now she's rolling, so she's trying to show mom, come on mom, I'm hungry, let me have some of this, please. So she's doing all the techniques to try and make mom feel sorry for herself. It's basically like a little child when it wants something from a supermarket or a shop, or a, and it's it just goes on and on and on, and ask and ask, and, and it will try every angle. It's the exact same thing with this cub but you can see what shadow is doing is she's basically stripping the lining from all of that rumen so all of that grass that was inside of this impala's stomach she's stripping that all off and then she's slowly but surely swallowing chunks of that skin and that stomach lining and now it is going to be full of nutrients so it's not a bad thing for her to eat this is probably not the most tasty part of the carcass and it's why she probably pulled it out and buried it but if you've lost the carcass you might as well feed off it and get the nutrients i can tell you though that the smell is quite pungent from here there's a strong room and smell it's amazing when you first smell that it's quite foreign but once you've smelt it a few times it's something that oh look at that light on her how beautiful is that so it's a smell that you'll never forget it's kind of got this very i don't know what the word is for it but it's, it's it is a grassy smell but it is a lot more pungent than that and and you, you pick it up straight away whenever you kind of come across a stomach that has got rumen that's lying outside of it you get that but let's see a little cub is just moving off now maybe it's going to find something of its own hidden here you never know she might have hidden other organs no i'm gonna have to lie down sorry little one you're gonna have to wait for mom unfortunately Right, now as the sun comes out here at Juma for the first time in the last few days, I believe Scotty D, who is sitting in the Mara, has a beautiful, beautiful view of the sun actually disappearing over the grassy plains of East Africa. Well, is this not a absolutely breathtaking scene? A gorgeous, a gorgeous sunset here in the Maasai Mara the quintessential Balanites tree silhouetted on the horizon and a whole array of beautiful, beautiful clouds and some Thompson's gazelle in the foreground. Absolutely magical. Sounds like you're having a great sighting with a Tristan and what a day it's been filled with big cats and lots of action. Who knows, maybe Tristan's leopard will also get lucky on a hunt this evening. Absolutely magic. We, we saw the prospects of this beautiful sunset and we're racing around trying to find some animals at a low enough angle to be able to get the shots we wanted and the beauty that you're seeing here. Not quite perfectly silhouetted, but it was good fun trying to find the right subjects to show you guys. And just in the nick of time, we did. And the light's changing rapidly, so Mono's having to think on his feet here and adjust the settings as the sighting unfolds. You're doing a great job, Mono. Surprisingly. <laughs> Only kidding. <laughs> Only kidding. Well, what a day it's been. Manu and I are looking forward to a cold beverage of sorts after a long day out. And while we head towards an outlet that will provide us with a cold beverage, we are going to be sending you across to Taylor, who is also enjoying a beautiful sunset. Did you just say we were heading for a cold beverage, or did I make that up? Did I want to hear that? <laughs> Scotty, you, you and Manu make me laugh. But how incredible is the sight that we've got, and listen to the sounds as well. Well... We might have got here just at the right time. Well, no, you might have got here at the right time. We've been sitting for, for a little while, but it's been absolutely amazing. I mean, big male lion with a big full belly, covered in flies. Lots of birds chirping, and then, of course, the setting sun and all its beautiful colors that it has brought to the sky this evening. I think it doesn't get much better than that in Africa. That's all I can say, especially with the way the trees are lined up. That will most certainly make a great screensaver. 
wow, wow, wow. If only I could take a picture that could do it justice. I don't think so. I don't even think how you see things on camera sometimes portray how beautiful they really are. This is incredible. Right, that's very nice. Let's go around and see what our other lion's are up to. We have to go. I'm just making sure I'm not going to drive into anybody. I seem to have a tendency to do that. <laughs> right, let's go. Ah, Sleepy Max Sleepington has got his head up now. So we'll go and have a look at him. And hopefully, once we've seen him, we can go back and the other fella would have also woken up. I'm just checking. I thought something was wrong with the camera. Everything good? All good. All good. Okay. Sometimes the camera is just tend to fall off with all the corrugations that we have to go over and want to make sure that we weren't going to lose it we'll stop in a little minute we're almost there and he's just gazing off into the distance it's very pretty wee wee actually we might stop by to I just want to give you with that other car just to show you where the cubs are and also just to show you how the males don't really care that the cubs are over there he's got no interest whatsoever so not too far away if those little ones started whining he'd hear them quite easily and I don't know if he'd go running to their rescue if a herd of elephants came charging through not sure about that but that's one of the rangers so they're allowed to stay out as late as they like I think they're also part of the anti-poaching patrol and isn't this a beautiful boy? Who are you out of the Triangle Boys? Or the Quechua Males, as they're also known as. We've got dental record. There was your opportunity to check. you got to be quick, though. Lovely dark mane, though. They are very pretty boys. They're not particularly ugly lions. What have you heard? Are you listening to your friends, the elephants, that are still in the forest? I think that's what he's doing at the moment. And that's why he turned his head so quickly. Let me have a little listen and see if I can hear anything. I can hear the leaves moving from the wind. I don't know what he's heard, but his hearing is also way better than mine. So whatever he's listening to, well, I'm not sure. Let me, you can hear the cubs. He's intrigued by something. Very fixated down the lugger. There's a bit of water in that lugger. I wonder if maybe a little antelope or something hasn't come down to have a drink and that's what he, maybe he's seen something. Maybe he hasn't even heard anything. And my eyesight is going to start to deteriorate and his is only get, going to get even better. I mean, they can see six times better than what we can at night. Can you imagine being able to six, see six times the strength your eyes can see at night? incredible that would be really wonderful i bet i'd be spotting all sorts of rodents doing all sorts of things and there he just sits and not another big yawn i think he's yawned out okay we're gonna bounce up and down i might go and have a just a little check on the cubs see how they're doing and i suppose noelle's doing a little bit of babysitting herself it seems as though she is watching the young sticks cubs Here is your screenshot of the day with this uber cuteness. So full from having just nursed and busy resting his head and then the, the sibling that's behind him is sort of cuddled up and has a little paw on his back. Oh, he's just pushed him off. <laughs> oh, shame. absolutely adorable so um the mum got up and moved off a little bit and then one of the other adult females is also moving around a little bit they're busy grooming each other so they're definitely going to start moving soon i'm hoping when they move they go down for a drink that will be lovely. We're actually going to have a sunset tonight um, as opposed to some clouds. 
There's a fish eagle calling in the background. I don't know. Actually, it's not a fish eagle. Sorry, I think it's a Wahlberg. So I'm losing my mind a little bit. Um, I don't know if you all could hear that. There's the spots we talked about earlier. That's a nice screenshot as well. That's super cute. Tristan also has some uber cuteness, albeit older uber cuteness. We're going to head over to him and give you all a chance to see Shadow's youngster. I do have cuteness. I have a cuteness overload. Shadow's little cub has just stalked all the way along over the top of the mound to try and chase its mom and to try and jump on her and she went flying off the top of the mound and now they're having a little game. Look, look at that. How cute is that? Is that not the sweetest thing? And a bit of bonding, a bit of grooming. So even after a bit of hissing and kind of going at each other and having a little mom-daughter feud, they at least have managed to figure their things out and have at least got a situation where everybody still loves one another and they're still going to groom each other very cool to see i love it when little baby or well, leopard cubs get playful it's the best thing in the world and you might find she do do it again and it's all important for later in life it helps her practice helps her get used to what's going on and to be able to learn how to hunt and hunt down things like male impalas all by herself later in life so it really is a wonderful thing to watch and we had such a beautiful little sighting of her pouncing off the mound itself now since i'm just going to move you slightly forward because at the moment what's happening is my shadow is actually in the way of there we go how's that that's beautiful light now now the little cub is still moving around quite a bit and is still coming this way but look at that light on shadow it's just that perfect afternoon post kind of cloudy stormy weather and you get this orange rich light that gets onto a leopard and a leopard cannot look any better than when it is in warm light like that so you can see a couple of the vultures in the background and here comes the cub again now just watch the cub if the cub gets close she'll start to kind of stalk down and she gets a little bit lower and she slowly but surely then starts to kind of stalk onto mom and maybe she's not going to do it now although it's i think because mom has spotted her but look you see she's going down and she's just rolling and you'll see once mom loses sort of patience and stops watching her then she starts her stalk again so she's already got that kind of motion down pat so she knows already how to be able to stalk without being seen so as soon as she gets watched she stops which is exactly how a leopard will be is if an impala turns towards where she is they'll stop and then uh, you know they'll then carry on once the impala looks away and it's the same with mom so she's learning valuable techniques by stalking mom and to try and hunt her mother is actually a really really good thing for her so amazing to watch and like i say it's it's interesting to watch this little cub as it goes about its business it doesn't sit still for two seconds the whole time we've been here it has been moving around the only time we saw it actually sleep was when mom was on the termite mound and there really wasn't much going on early in the afternoon but other than that it has been moving all over the place and it's what's making its mom move now it's just seen a vulture fly away so i think it's got a situation where it wants to go and investigate but the vultures are very far from where we are now they're right on the distance in the horizon there you can see all in the big tree over there so that's where you can see the branch is actually wobbling that's where the vulture flew off from and landed on the other side so it went quite a long way away but that's not going to stop her she seems as though she's going to go wander off and investigate what are these large birds that are congregating in this area maybe it's also a tactic to be able to get some distance between mom and herself that she can then start to come back and stalk this way no nope, she's heading way off towards the vultures you can see the little white tip to the tail heading in that direction i'm sure she's going to lose bravery fairly shortly and she'll turn around there we go she's going to just stop and watch them there rather i think she's actually looking up at the vulture that's not far from her there's one that's just up to her left hand side and i think that's the one that she's rather going to be watching than the ones far away and she's quite curious about this big bird that is sitting at the top of a tree and watching her and it's almost a stare down between the two at the moment very cool little cub you're going to learn to hate vultures vultures are going to attract a lot of danger for you and a lot of things that steal all your food Here, okay let's see now if she's going to stalk no mom is watching her so i don't think she's got any chance but what she was doing earlier is quite clever she was learning to use cover and so she went round the mound and let's see if she's going to do it again it might be the case that she'll kind of go around the back and then from there 
No, she's just not doing it now. I think the game is up a little bit, you know. She knows that mom knows where she is. She's not exactly making herself small and unknown at this stage. Let's see. Maybe. Look, you see her? Look at those eyes. Those are plotting eyes, aren't they? You see, look, look how she uses the mound. So she's going behind the mound. And she might do the exact same thing as she did just now, which is basically to come over the top of the mound and then to be able to get herself into a position. There we go. You see what I mean? So she's getting in herself into a position where she can then strike out and jump on mom. See, look, she's poking. And there she comes. How cool is that? <laughs> You're a too cute little one. It's such fun watching little cats play and learn. And we've been spoiled this afternoon between the sticks cubs and obviously Shadow's little cub and Taylor with cubs in the Mara. It's lots of little animals at the moment. And it's wonderful to see and, and to watch them go about their business. And like I say, it's all important. And now we're going to have a ferocious grooming session, which is typical. You can see mom is really cleaning little one and she's doing the same. And this is quite typical after feeding and moving around. You do see this a lot from a leopard and her cub. What this also might indicate is that they've decided that they might move off from here because you often find with, with leopards and, and, and particularly when they kind of finish eating, they'll clean themselves and then they go off maybe for water. So you might find that Shadow decides that's it, we're going to leave this carcass to this hyena and we're going to carry on and maybe head towards Treehouse Dam or one of the puddles somewhere around here for a drink. Right now while we watch these two and see how, okay Shadow, yes, yes, don't growl at me, I'm just watching you playing. Now we watch these two and see what they get up to, let's go back across to Taylor McCurdy and her two beautiful male lines and I wonder if they're going to give us an audio show for the evening. It's beautiful, we've had such an exciting couple of minutes, it was really really funny but it happens so quickly as does most things out here in nature. Uh, but you remember our friend, the little elephant that was charging through the bushes, he eventually came through and out of nowhere surprised first Jahawi and Awi had almost had a heart attack because he trumpeted so loudly and then he came charging up the bank and he chased uh, our friend the tailless male lion, the fella on the left with the, the gorgeous man that was laying flat and was with the elephant earlier and chased him and then of course typical displacement behavior the elephant chased the lion away and then he took tried to take his frustrations out on us and mock charged us but he was a young boy he must have only been about seven or eight years old so you know he was little and I wasn't particularly worried and I just sort of sassed him I had a little laugh at him and I think he was embarrassed so he kept running off into the distance to catch up to uh, the rest of the elephants so that was quite funny but it's just these two big boys here. They are really, really lovely cats. But I think my favorite out of the triangle boys is the tailless male. Now, he's not completely tailless. He's just got the tip missing. Tesla! Sure, again! Long time no chat. All my little friends are chatting me today. First, Mita, and now you have made my day, my blonde-haired friend. And uh, now you're wondering if lions eat any vegetables. Lions are not very good at eating vegetables like I hope you and your brother Ben are um, so lions don't like to eat vegetables very much and their mothers cannot force them to eat their vegetables they don't have to sit around the dinner table for too long uh, they just eat what they want and I don't think a lion would tell them any different either I'd be too scared to tell a lion off and make it eat its vegetables sometimes what you can see is they'll eat the grass so I suppose grass is a bit like a vegetable not one that I'd want to eat and I, I much prefer broccoli cauliflower butternut, all those delicious things. And um, anyways, so they will eat lots of grass if they're feeling a little bit unwell, if they've got a hairball, so it helps, helps bring that back up again. And you're acting very playful. What's biting you? I think something must be, some insect of sorts must be uh, nibbling on this line. You can see that tail is swatting, and it's not at us. And he's biting the air and rolling around like he's playing, but he's not playing, even though it looks very cute. He's probably quite frustrated right now that he can't get rid of that itch. Sorry, lovely fella. You look like you need to go to the salon, my friend. You're a bit patchy. Look at the different colors in his mane. It's quite beautiful. He's got like a little blonde patch there. Maybe that's the equivalent of gray hair for a lion. They are lovely. I don't know where they're going to go. Uh, I hope they don't go too far and stray away from the road because we are in a non-off-roading area, which is not ideal because we won't be able to follow them for very long. I'm actually going to just add a little bit of lighting here. Now, I can spotlight these cats. They're not hunting. 
He's going to walk right past the car. He's walking in front of my lights now. He moves up the way. Hello, big boy. Off he goes. Just casually going for a stroll. So I can spotlight them, no problem. When they start hunting, however, that will all change. We won't be putting a spotlight on them. We've got our infrared lights on. Uh, but sometimes it is nice to look at uh, predators with spotlight. But we won't keep it on them for too long. There's no, no need. Actually, should we have a look at him so we can get some nice pictures? Because it is quite nice. And I'm not going to put it in his eyes either. See how I'm just illuminating just enough to give him a bit of color. That's what you want to do. If you, when the animal starts squinting their eyes because of the spotlight, then you know you're shining it in the wrong place. But you can see he's got his eyes wide open at the moment and doesn't mind it. And spotlighting techniques are very, very important. It's one thing that they do teach you uh, how to, to sort of what correct measures uh, and when and why can't I speak when. You should use a spotlight and when you shouldn't. I think you're going to have to get up and move too. There's some, maybe there's ants in the grass that are biting them. That could be a possibility. Matabele ants or the Siafu ants. They could be nibbling on them. It's just weird that it's now happening to both of them. And they keep rolling over as if it started on their underside and then they're trying to get rid of it. Maybe that's how he lost his tail. That's exactly how this lion lost his tail, everybody. He bit it off. No, I'm just joking. That's not true. He didn't do that. I'm so sorry, Curse. Please, can you repeat yourself? Shall we go to infrared for something different? We're going to infrared now. Oh, lovely. There we go. My friend Tesla says that she's renamed the lions, and I agree with Tesla. Tesla says these lions' names are now... I've forgotten already. What were their names? Bob and? Bob and someone. But I like those names better. I'm sorry I didn't hear them properly. Oh, sorry. Well, it was me. I wasn't concentrating. I was too busy watching the lion walk past the car because it's so cool. Bye, Mr. Cat. Okay, we're going to reposition. We're going to have another look at these beauties and see where they go. Let's jump back on board with Noel, who's also got lions. So mum stood up, went over, groomed herself, greeted some of the other females, and then came back and it looked like she was going to walk right in and greet her cubs, but she laid down, oh here we go, here we are, mummy I love you. I work with a lot of uh, very rugged staunch men and even the sight of this makes them say things like oh mudar and cuteness, so it's not just my girly bits, look, look, look. So Jean-Dre is a staunch, manly man, and he's giggling with delight in the background. So all of this play, everything that we're seeing, the grooming, the playing, uh, with amongst the cubs and with mum, remember this is all reaffirming the social bond. Oh. So not only is she taking care, not only will she groom, but this is, it's like when you wake up in the morning and you give your loved one a hug, or if you have kids and you give your kids a hug, it's the same idea. Can we hear the sounds that, that the little one's making? Dark Star, you're asking if little lion cubs can only feed from their mothers. No, not only, there is something called aloe nursing, which is the, the nursing of, of cubs amongst females of the same pride. And again, that's dependent upon personality. I've seen females that are very connected and don't mind and will do that. And I've also seen females kill cubs of another female within a pride because they kept trying too much. Um, but yes, it can happen and it's all individual based. Chandra, I don't know if you can go left here and there's that one that's eating. Yes. <laughs> Andre commented earlier, what a nice way to spend a Sunday afternoon, and I said, definitely, there's no better way to spend a Sunday afternoon than with the entertainment that we're having now. Also, we're getting just a little bit of golden sunset light. So 
the colors are popping out a little bit more. And then Jandre, if you wouldn't mind, directly in front of us, we have two of the adult females and one of the youngsters from the, the middle litter who are busy grooming each other. So to me, these two females in front look relatively the same age, so I'm gonna just say sisters, but without knowing the makeup of the sticks, I can't know for certain. Notice her teeth marks, you can just see there but she's not suckling anymore. I would guess that she's probably the mom of the eldest set of, of, of uh, cubs here. I've counted 10 cubs in total, and it looks like seven of which are males. So three different litters again, 10 in total, and seven that I can see are males. We can see most of them as Jandre pans through. There's a sneaky cheeky one that's found its own, it's a young male who's found its own little bush to the left. Yeah, so you can just bear it, there we go. That's all you can see of that one. He's decided that he doesn't want to have anything to do with anybody else. Now all of four of the little cubs are busy chewing every piece of bark they can get. Jeff, you're wondering, do the big cats have taste buds like us? And this question is actually tickling my memory. I feel like we found out the answer to this maybe about two weeks ago, but for the life of me, I can't remember. I know they do have taste buds, but the amount of buds we did figure out. Does anyone remember what the amount of taste buds for a lion was? I want to say it's something like 160. I can't remember now. Um, but yeah, they definitely have taste buds like we do. Ah, thanks. I was way off. It was over 10,000 for humans with the taste buds and 470 for lions. Thank you, Cursed. Knew my memory tickled correctly, just not with the number itself. <laughs> I concur on Jandre. <laughs> <And, laughs> Which we could do a behind the scenes of our of our vehicle right now because it's just two adults absolutely canning themselves <laughs> at these lion cubs. I know you can hear me but Andre's just doing it a little bit quieter, quieter in the back there. <laughs> so if you go to the right a little bit, Jandre, the one that's sort of grabbing the other one's neck there, yes they are playing but that grab hold that it was doing there is actually how it will will grab prey sometimes so a lot of the prey a lot of the play that they're doing will incorporate their muscles into the muscle memory that they need later in life to capture and kill the, the prey species they need to do that with uh, there we go there's a, a good example again um for for food and then some of it's just silly play So I curse, what was Philip asking? Do these lions... <laughs> Philip, they didn't take down and kill the branch themselves. The, the branch was already sort of half dead and they're just massacring the bits. Ah, oh, Philip, you have a good sense of humor. I'm, <laughs> I'm, enjoy I'm enjoying that question right now. All right, Taylor thinks her lions might roar, her two male lions, which is always fabulous. 
So we're gonna head back to her. Don't worry, Jandre and I are not gonna go anywhere. We're gonna stay here and we'll be here when you get back from Taylor. Have a little listen. Mm-mm, lions. Don't be like that. I heard that these boys are notorious for playing the guides. I heard that they teased Scott, but eventually his patience wore off. Well, he's, well, he's been wear off. But his patience was well worth it, and they did let out a big roar. I reckon he's listening. He's listening around him, so... I don't know if there's somebody else that's contact calling. There were some lionesses and maybe another male lion. They were lying out in the open, but very, very far away. You couldn't, there we go, you couldn't really see it. There is another lion roaring. There we go, there's the third boy. I just wish that they'd all roared at exactly the same time, but it seems as though the choir needs a bit of work. They obviously haven't been together for quite some time, and you know, it takes a couple of days of practice at band to get back into it. So I think that's exactly what needs to happen. But who knows? Maybe they all come together now that they all know where each other, well, everybody's sitting in the same spot. No one's got to be moved yet. So hopefully they're just going to go greet each other, do another big roar for us all together, and then I'll be a happy girl and I can go to bed and go to sleep. That was amazing. That was so cool. I cannot tell you how I live for experiences like that. I am one of the luckiest people alive. I bet you're all sitting there absolutely envious. I mean, it wasn't the best roars I've ever heard, but the fact that it was four lions and the way that one started and then the other and then the third and then the fourth just chiming in. That's what magic is made of for me. That was absolutely incredible. Where are they now? So... I suspect when we first arrived and we spotted the one lion, there must have been a male there too. And then the other fella sounds like he's coming from a little bit further south. So we'll see. We'll sit and wait. I was going to leave, but I don't think I'm going to leave anymore. However, Tristan has, I think, actually I don't know what he's got, but it sounds like there's another leopard sighting. No, no, Taylor, we're still sitting with shadow and cub it must be all those cooking of roast potatoes that has got you a bit confused today but it is a situation where it's pretty much still the same you can see shadow is having a good nap on a fallen over tree cub has been up and down annoying her and kind of grooming her and it was very cute just now we had the little cub's eyes peering over the back of this fallen over tree and shadow grooming her and then the paws on shadow's head but for now it's all kind of settled down they haven't moved too far from where you last saw us we've just moved a little bit further south but not much they can probably still see where the, that hyena is with that carcass and I think they're just going to hang around in the hope that maybe this hyena leaves and they can then get themselves a bit of food but at this stage it's all rather sleepy or rather sedate and all rather very easy and I don't think we're going to see too much more from them moving around oh look at that Uh, so Taylor says she was making mashed potatoes and not roast, but why would you make mashed potatoes on a Sunday? Sundays are made for roast potatoes, so I think Taylor has had too much sun today and she should maybe not be making mashed potatoes or be allowed in the kitchen at all at this stage. What do you think, Sense? I 
think the sun has roasted. Yeah, Senzo says the sun has roasted her brain, which I think is quite fitting. But you can see Shadows just pops her head up every now and then. She's far less sort of likely to want to move. She's still panting away. She's full at the end of the day. She ate all that stomach lining earlier. And then the little cub is the one that is actually so busy. She's the one that's kind of still head up and looking around. You can see she's stri straight behind us at the moment. At one point she was lying, I would say, not even a meter from our back left wheel and she was just staring up at Senzo as though she wanted to make friends it was quite amazing actually watching her and then she went back to mom and had a little bit of a chill session with her and now she's decided she's going to just plonk over so I think it's going to be that time of the day where they're going to rest a bit before the night time kicks in and I highly 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 doubt that we're going to find them here tomorrow unless by some miracle they're able to steal back that kill but even then there's so little left on there it's just skin and bones and a bit of the neck area that they would probably finish it during the course of the night I think we're going to find their track somewhere around Trias Dam tomorrow morning and moving in that general vicinity and I think they're going to probably in all likelihood rest around that area well I'm hoping they will because it'd be nice to catch up with them again in the morning it's been so nice to have the two of them around as much as we have right now I'm sitting with these two and watching mom and cub have a wonderful afternoon together and it seems Noel is having an even better afternoon with the two well four sticks cubs should I say not two sticks cubs I'm thinking of the Nkumas but the four little sticks cubs and all of the sticks females and well even a Birmingham too it's a wonderful thing to see and hopefully they too will stick around over the next few days All right, the females are starting to get mobile, moving slowly but surely. Um, and everyone behind them is going to start moving as well because they are, of course, the leaders of the Pride. And for those who might just be joining us, this is the Styx Pride. We are live, we are interactive, so you can send through your questions, hashtag Safari Live on the Twitter or on the YouTube chat, you're more than welcome. The big male, one of the, one of the big Birminghams has just set up. Yes, he is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful boy. So we've been tracking him. He's just realizing that two of the females wandered off. He's like, oh my goodness, where did my females go? But he can still see them a little bit. Very aware now. Sometimes it takes them forever. I've watched whole prides leave their males and they've only woken up sort of 30 minutes later going, oh my goodness. And then the females do that sometimes on purpose just to give themselves a break. And then sometimes they just can't be bothered to wait. There's a gorgeous yawn. And here come the cubs to greet dad slash uncle, depending. There's one just in front of him that's trying to figure out whether or not he can approach. Daryl, you're wondering how often dominant males will take over another pride. Depends on um, if the males that are in charge Okay, let me put it this way. So you get dominant male, territorial males in an area, and you get dominant female prides in an area. If those dominant males go away, there's a vacuum for space for some other males to come in and or a male. If those males that are dominant in that area um, uh, are older and there's a younger coalition that wants to come through, they can take them out. Um, and then the pride that's in that area will then become their pride. Sometimes it's a peaceful um, takeover and sometimes the females aren't that happy. So remember you get coalitions of males and you get prides of females. And then males will attach themselves sometimes to one, sometimes to two, sometimes to three different prides. It depends, especially if they they have uh, within their territory more than one pride. They are definitely not always with those females. They have to mark territory. And even if they do have one pride, they have to mark territory and move off. So they're not always, <laughs> always with, oh, the cubs are jumping on dead. They're not always with their females. <laughs> Now, this is a good dad because good dads don't turn around and sort of snap at their little ones. It does <laughs> it does happen, but I mean, those are sharp little claws. Uh, this male is fully happy to, <laughs> to be Jungle Jim. And it's interesting, while he was... <laughs> While he was sleeping, they, they didn't want to bother him much, but now that they can see he's awake, they're very, very interested in their in their dad slash uncle.
exactly. It's like, please play with me. Please. Ooh. One look. Okay, all the adult females have gone. Ooh. So that was too much. That was too much for dad. That was a little bit too much for him. A little bit too much pain. Dad has not eaten. Dad slash uncle has not eaten in a while. He's looking a little bit hungry. Most of the females as well looked hungry. So now that all the adult females have gone off and most of the older cubs except for that one at the back, these little cubs are going to follow dad through. And then they are going down towards the water's edge. Some of them are already drinking. Once this big male passes through, I'm going to just drive forward and we'll get a, a good visual. I just don't want to start up the vehicle now. I don't want to scare, scare the youngsters. His name is what, Kirst? Tino. 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 Oh, so, so Kirst, in the Sabi Sands, do they give not just the coalitions, but each individual a name as well? Okay. Really, you're going to lie down there? All right, let's head up to Taylor quick. She's got a nocturnal creature for us that might run away. So we'll go up to her and then I'll reposition and we'll get a nice shot for you of them drinking and of the cubs playing with dad. <laughs> quick, 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 quick. There's a white-tailed mongoose. Where's our white-tailed mongoose gone now? It's here, somewhere. It wasn't too scared. It's actually quite relaxed, but maybe now that I'm driving right up to it's probably not. There it is. Ta-da! It tried to trick us. Stop trying to trick us, mongoose. Hang on, I have to move again. It's going to the edge of that tree. Hang on. It's behind that shrub now. I'm just trying to see where it's coming out. So I've got my spotlight on. I can use the spotlight on this thing, though. It doesn't mind it too much. It is just, they are just nervous creatures, full stop. Okay, let me go forward. I will show you it. I will. I will, I will, I will. No man, surely it couldn't have run off. Where's it hiding? It's a sneaky, 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 sneaky. Oh no. Okay, sorry everybody. I thought we were really going to have it this time. It was very relaxed. It didn't seem to mind. And then it just changed. Cha well, I suppose it changed its mind. And then booked out. And it went behind that tree somewhere over there. But now it's gone. It's probably just sitting flat in the grass. It'll camouflage very, very well. Ooh, ah, uh, Lara Moore, you say mongoose on the loose. Mongoose on the loose. That sounds like a great song. I could probably dance to that. Yes, it is a mongoose on the loose, but it is not a mongoose on the loose that we're going to see, unfortunately. Well, that's sad. Maybe we find another one. Let's quickly have a look. This area is filled with creatures of the night. It's actually quite nice. And the LA's are back out again tonight. I can confirm this because they've crawled all the way up my legs already and they're also flying into my head and into the lights. So that is very good news for us or for those that want to see little small nocturnal creatures. We might have a good chance this evening. We could see owls which are very exciting. We don't often see owls of the Mara. We could see more white-tailed mongoose, snakes. I would like to see a rock python. I would also like to see a brown house snake eating elates. I would like to see some frogs, maybe some bullfrogs feasting upon them too. Bats? Well, no, no, maybe not bats. <laughs> well, I said bats. <laughs> bats prefer little small insects. I've never seen a microchiroptera bat eating a termite. Sometimes I talk absolute nonsense. You don't listen to the things I say. Listen to, rather listen to Jamie and Brink and James and Tristan and Noel. I'll just be here for the funny things. Give me all the hilarious sightings. Okay, wait, we're gonna find another one, I'm convinced. So I'm concentrating now because I'm looking for the reflection of the eyes. Where are you? Or oh, we're gonna find a striped pole cat. Oh, I see eyes, I see eyes. I see it, it's running. It's a something. It's a, I'm sure it's another white-tailed mongoose. Oh, 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 hold on, a little bit bumpy. Okay, I'm going to use the, yes, it's the white-tailed mongoose. It's not the one that I was talking about, but it's another one. 
And the lion is roaring. Listen. Yeah. It's using its anal glands. Did you see that? Not even acknowledging that the lion is roaring. How rude, because I think it's a beautiful call. Sorry, I'm jumping around the car trying to get the air lights off my legs. Did you see how it actually uh, deposited a little bit of something on a piece of grass, an anal secretion? And uh, so very, very much like what a hyena would do, something similar to that, which is quite cool, since obviously on a little territorial patrol. Very exciting. Let's see mating mongoose. I'm trying to follow it with the spotlight because it's just a little bit too far away for the uh, for the infrared lights. I have a beetle in my shoe. How did a beetle get in my shoe? There's not even any room, barely for my feet. Now, James, you're wondering if there's any purpose to that white tail. Uh, perhaps it's to try and confuse predators and make them think that there's something like a skunk. Uh, I mean, it's got very similar markings, or maybe it's savage like a uh, honey badger, again, got similar markings. I don't know if there's an exact function, it probably is. I'd, however, it's not a follow me sign. I think um, follow me signs are predominantly for sort of diurnal animals in terms of something like that, you know, that, that is obvious, and, and they're not diurnal animals. I don't know how well white sort of sticks out in the black of the night if you don't have an artificial light on it. I can't see that color. Well, I can't see it, so I couldn't, can't actually comment on that. Uh, so, so I wonder if it's just maybe to try and confuse something and make it look as if it was a skunk of sorts, because we know that animals that do have sort of small, uh, foul-smelling substances that they will either squirt out or s secrete uh, typically are, are black and white in colour. So, episomatic coloration, they're distasteful, perhaps. Right, we're going to keep bumbling. I think we're going to find plenty white tailed mongoose this evening, which is very exciting. So, I'm going to keep searching for them as well as owls. Noelle is still sitting with a very adorable lions. So, the majority of the pride has come down for a drink. Dad slash uncle, so we're just going to call him the male. What, what did you guys call him? Tino. Um, one of the Birmingham boys is still up on the damn wall with the little ones. Um, we actually came down and positioned the way we did because we want to get some really nice visuals for you face front of these females and the older sets of cubs. So we're just going to wait here and see what transpires. There's that reaffirming the social bond we chatted about earlier. The muscles in her chest. Yes, she has not. Um, this is the mum. You can actually see. Oh, don't lie down. Before she lay down, uh, you could see her her swollen teats there, but they have not eaten. I would say within the last sort of four or five days. That would be my guesstimate. And this is a perfect time for them to start to hunt. Tula Ann, it's good to hear your voice. I haven't heard you in a while. Um, Tula Ann, sorry, did you ask, are baby lions cute to hold like your kittens? Was that the question, Kurt? Claws like the, oh, I've got you. Yeah, they're just like your kitten's claws, exactly like that, and they're really sharp. Um, they are, they are dangerous little implements as it were and if you have a kitten then you would know exactly exactly what it feels like and even your kitten's little teeth are the same as those those baby lions that one's coming in for a bath it's bath time This time of night is my favorite time of night, so the sun's gone down, we probably have about another sort of 15 minutes of usable light, maybe maybe 10, and with, it wasn't extremely warm by any means today, but um, this getting ready, this lion getting ready for the evening, um, and, and for making their way around is um, one of my favorite evening rituals to watch. 
It never gets old to me. I am never disappointed. And I'm quite in love with most of these adult females in this group. They've got really stunning golden, golden eyes. I mean, look at the muscles on her. She's got bulldog type muscles. You can see she's a very good hunter. You can see uh, she's been a good mom over the years and, and raised some little ones. One still wants more bath time. There you can see how she's drooping low. This is the mother of the little ones. Can you see the difference with her? who's lactating as opposed to the other females. Oh, sorry, I'm lying, I'm lying to you. That's the female with the middle set of cubs. Then if we come, the one that's passing by me now, this is the female with the eldest set of cubs, and then the one coming through now is the one with the youngest cubs. You see the difference in the lactation there? So the big male that I can see hasn't moved yet, and I'm wondering if he might stay behind with the little, little ones. I have seen that come. Um, or I have seen that come. I have seen that happen before. Let's go back up to Taylor and Kenya quickly, um, and we will stay with the sticks as they meander off. Let's see what Taylor has in store for us. We've got a Janet, we've got a Janet, and it's after all the Alates. It's far, far away, though, against the tree line where the Mara River is. Perfect spot for a Janet. There it is, hopping about. See it jumping around? Oh, my goodness. I wish my spotlight was stronger. What is it doing in there? I wonder if it's just chasing after and leaping into the air after the uh, after all the Alates. Is it going to come out again, Janet? Please? I was very excited. I've never seen a Janet bounce around so much in my entire life. Very cool. Anyways, it's now gone into the tree line. We might find more. Let's look. Let's search. Let's be like Rihanna and search, 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 search. Just joking. I hope that song is now stuck in all of your heads. Ha 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 I'm so evil. Okay, let's... And it's also not the lyrics I know. Don't worry in case you think I... Oh, hyena. Hi, hyena. Where are you running to? Shall we, shall we run with you? Well, I won't. I'm just going to drive the car very slowly next to the hyena as it walks. Now, I've also got my spotlight out. I'm using it tonight. Not too much, though. Just every now and then. Again, it's just using it to enhance the infrared light. It's very far away. How cool is that shadow that it's casting? It's quite eerie. Looks a bit like a werewolf. Actually, no, that reminds me of a brown hyena, the shadow that it's casting. Just stopping, having a little look around. You might even see the alates buzzing about. What have you heard? Listening very carefully to what the night has to say changing direction completely now so something must have intrigued it. it's now going west rather than south very interesting i love seeing all these critters of the night don't you i just assume that you've all said yes taylor of course <laughs> i make up my own answers into the head to what you were all thinking 
That's why I have so much fun on safari. <laughs> this could also be good chameleon country too. That's for sure with all the trees that are around. Oh, hippopotamus crossing. Look at all the animals that I'm seeing. Hello, hippopotamus. Sorry, I didn't mean to shout. I shall leave my light off for the hippopotamus. He is deciding if he's, or she, excuse me, madam, you could be a madam, deciding whether or not you're going to cross the road. Are you a chicken? I feel like there's a horrible jo joke waiting here. Come on, share them, hashtags, fiery life. What is the funniest thing you can think of about a hippo crossing the road? And go. And while we wait for this fella to cross the road, or girl, let's go across to Tristan. He's decided. He's not missing out on the fun. He's back with the spots. I am back with Shadow. Well, I actually didn't really leave her, to be honest. As you can see, she's just going to cross the road behind me. And I don't know if she's going to head down the road or what her story is going to be. It looks like she might actually just lie down somewhere there. It could be that she just feels like rather being on the road itself. So I'm just going to turn around so that Senzo doesn't have to have cables and aerials and all kinds of other things in his way because you can see she's lying directly behind me. Now the cub is off to my left. He's busy trying to frolic around with hyenas and try and play that game. So <laughs> that's what that one's busy with. But hopefully Shadow will just lie down and she'll be chilled and we'll be able to finish our evening with the two of them it's been such a wonderful thing i was going to leave because there were other vehicles that wanted to come but then everybody said that they'll leave instead and so we're in a situation now where i can just stay with these two which is absolutely wonderful really so we've had such a cool afternoon it's been a leopard sighting where they haven't stopped oh sorry jigger I'd rather use the accelerator and just not just let out the clutch but we haven't had a situation where the two of them have really stopped for too long this afternoon they've been up and down and all over the place and it's just been so nice to actually spend time with them and a lot of it's by ourselves which has been really wonderful but i think shadow's decided the the sort of road is a much better place to lie at the moment than in the grass it's probably find less insects crawling on her and less of any sort of obstructions of grass and various other things and she's worked out that that's exactly where she wants to be and she's looking about as regal as you could possibly get from a leopard there is nothing better though i must be honest when you come around a corner and you see that lying in the road it is seemingly the best thing ever i absolutely love watching when you come around a corner and you find leopard especially if you've had a tough day and you've been trying to find leopard trying to find leopard and then you come around and you see something like this i know this afternoon has not been the case but whenever i see a leopard in the road like this i always think of the times when we track them that it's nice if they were would do this a little bit more often than what they actually do because a lot of the time we end up in a situation where we look for them everywhere and they very seldom actually lie on the roads like there's lions a lot of the time on roads but leopards not nearly as much as what you see from the lions but she's starting to get quite sleepy you can see that head is starting to sort of bow down and I think it's gonna be a situation where she's eventually going to just fall asleep right there it's probably the most comfortable spot for her at the moment <clears throat> i'm not sure where the cub has gone like i said it was around and frolicking with the hyena behind me whether or not it's still doing that i'm not quite sure i think this stage is a situation where the hyena is probably still just chewing away i heard some crunching of bones just now so i'm pretty sure that hyena still got the carcass and still feeding and don't think it's going to let go of it at all right it seems as though taylor mccurdy who was a bit tardy has also become a little bit more awake in the last few minutes and has found many many things this evening that are of the nocturnal variety and she's now i believe got another one of those mongoose with big white fluffy tails This uh, mongoose is after roast potatoes, Tristan. That's what it's looking for. Typically the roast potatoes that are on the road. <laughs> this is a cool little white-tailed mongoose too because it, it doesn't seem to be so shy. It's running about and doing its thing in clear view for us, which is quite nice. And very, very busy. I think it's looking, again, I keep saying they're looking for the LA. LA. It's, there's lots of little beetles, little chafers around too, so it could be going for that. But I mean, ideally you want to find where all those LA's are being uh, expelled from, don't you? Because that, oh, there we are. Because that is going to be a gold mine. There you go, marking. Scent marking, of course. Bye-bye. Off it's going again. This is really interesting to watch them. I've never actually seen them scent mark before. We're very much like a mongoose. I've, well, I've, yeah, I've seen small grey mongoose 
centre mark, but I have never seen the white-tailed mongoose. This is the first time they've ever sat still. Thank you. Let me go up a bit further forward. Let's see if we can get another view. We're having lots of luck with all the little creatures. And it's also Hippo City out here. I have seen maybe about 30 or 40 hippos already, just everywhere. You know, they're all charging into us, just about, because they're trying to come out of their tunnels in the forest. Are you going to stay for one last view? Let's see. It's going up the mound. I think it's getting lucky now with finding with finding where exactly on oh no, earth it's gone now. It was on top of the mound. It has disappeared onto the other side. Oh no, there it is to the right. There we go, it's just running off to the right hand side. Yeah, it's disappeared. And it's gone into the bushes. We can't see it anymore. That's okay, we've seen so many of them. Probably gonna see a whole bunch more. It's a good night, really, really is a good night for nocturnal critters. Let me concentrate over this little bridge. No chameleons here. Sadly, I'm not the chameleon queen. Chameleon queen in Juma. No, I am the chameleon queen in Juma and I'm not the chameleon queen in Kenya. I'm just the marshmallow queen. Anyways, it's been great and I'll see you all tomorrow morning. I'm going to send you back across with Noel and of course the lovely lion cubs. I hear what you're saying. I really want to get the, the start of our segment shot to be him walking into camera. Yeah. I just want, um, I want, are you good? Yeah, that's exactly what I want. I mean, he's following them and they walked right here, so he should turn and come straight at us. Now, unfortunately, Noel's had a few gremlins, and so you're back with us as we make our way back home. We've just left Shadow right now. One of the other vehicles that was there, she was the way she was lying, he has some photographic tests, and so we let him have our position because we had such a nice sort of spot there. So left that for them to enjoy and for them to kind of enjoy their evening. And they only just got going now. Apparently, they arrived a bit late, so I'm sure they're going to have a wonderful evening with so much around. I believe the Nkuma Pride was seen on Biffle's Hook this afternoon as well, which is quite nice. And that one lioness from the Nkuma Pride was also found around Buffalo's Hook Dam, which is very, very cool. So, lots going on, lots happening, and it's excellent news that the sticks are walking north. Of course, I know the sticks can cover massive distance, and chances are they probably will head towards Torchwood, but you never know. Maybe they're going to end up hanging around for tomorrow morning's drive as well. And I believe those cubs are super cute. So, really, really, really great to have them around as well. And I was just saying to Senzo as we were kind of driving home now, what an incredible afternoon it's been from all sides. I mean, it started with a bang with Scott's cheetah kill and then we had the little eggs and obviously we've had lots of other baby animals this afternoon so it's been really a special afternoon I think everybody's had a wonderful time of it I know Taylor loves lions roaring and like I say Scott the cheetahs and various other sightings that we've had but unfortunately it's all that we've got time for so from Scott myself Taylor and Noel it's been a pleasure we'll see you all tomorrow morning on the sunrise safari and remember it's a little bit earlier tomorrow morning